here. We had a conversation amongst the board about recognizing and honoring some of our buildings uh, for the school year. Uh, so tonight we're going to start with our little learners first, and that's preschool, primary village north, and primary village south. Uh, so I'd like to welcome Andrew Contestable, Amy Klein, and Amy Allen to the podium. They're going to have a brief presentation where wonder begins. to speak to all of you this evening. Keep in mind, we are used to talking to three, four, five, six, and seven-year-olds, not adults, so bear with us. So Primary Village North is made up of 619 preschool through first grade students and 39 teachers. And Primary Village South is very similar, 746 students, 46 teachers. And I think the one thing that really sets the PVs apart is that everything is with young children in mind. From the moment you walk through the building at either north or south, you know that it is a place for young children. One of the things that still remains from when we opened the buildings is our neighborhood concept. When children are placed in a neighborhood, I believe we have four neighborhoods at PVN and five at PVS. When they're placed there as kindergartners, they loop and stay in that same neighborhood again for first grade. That allows them to get to know the other students and to get to know the teachers makes that transition from kindergarten to first grade a little bit easier. So we're going to talk to you a little bit tonight about a day in the life at PBS and PBN. Um, and it really starts first thing in the morning with kids coming out of their buses, out of their cars from their parents, um, their daycare vans, and it is a very social time. Kids start from the first day of school excited to get through the front doors, and on the last day of school they are excited to get through the front doors. So it's a social time at the beginning of the day. Kids are coming in, whether they're unpacking their coats, their backpacks, it's very social. They're talking to friends, they're going into their classrooms, and they're engaging in what we call purposeful play. It's like you and I. We want to start our day socializing with people. They don't sit down at a desk right away and get right to work. They really take time in purposeful play to explore, discover, build. They have Legos. They have... Um, art that they can do, they can write letters to their parents, they have all sorts of opportunities for choice, time to engage with their friends, and really kind of a soft start to their day. As they move from their purposeful play time, we then move into our class meetings. Our class meetings are how we start our day. It's where we start to build our classroom community, we review the learning experiences from the day before, we problem solve together, and we get ready to tackle a new day together. Oral language is paramount to early childhood education. We often start each day with students and teachers sharing not only about their lives, but also to build relationships and a positive classroom culture. We then move into a class meeting, which often starts with number corner, which Amy's gonna talk about in a little bit, and calendar activities. You can see on the right, the teacher is talking through a visual schedule. Children need to know what to expect in their day. Predictable routines and procedures are very important to young children. So as we think about math instruction at the PVs, we have some core components to that. Um, our bridges, lessons, number corner, dream box, workplace games, those are all components of our math instruction. Kindergartners are engaged in math lessons for 40 minutes, first graders are engaged for um, 80 minutes. And this is, these are some pictures from our bridges, um, our math instruction, math curriculum. Teachers at this point in the day, this is a time where they would give direct instruction, they would make those teaching points about the math concepts that they want kids to learn, and then we really open that up for kids to get involved with investigations, um, workplace games, so that they're playing games, but they're actually learning as they play those games together. They're turn-taking, they're learning how to share, there's all sorts of social-emotional components that can, can play out during the, that game time as well. Um, from there we move into number corner. This is a time where it comes off of 
um, the class meeting and this is an opportunity where kids are building their math skills using the calendar and so you can see there's lots of visual pieces to this because we know that kids need visual components to their day math tools so that they can take those abstract concepts and make those come to life for them um, and then we go into Dreambox, and this is our online um, program that we use. It's software that adapts with the child's level and abilities and continues to move them forward and progress. So this is a time where they can be working independently to build their math skills while teachers are pulling small groups to work in small group instruction. have our literacy block of time, paramount obviously is reading and writing. Um, we've seen uh, very big changes in literacy instruction based on the new research about the science of reading. Centerville has developed a comprehensive approach to literacy with multiple layers. Daily reading workshop takes about 80 minutes in a first grade day and about 40 minutes in a kindergarten day. And I'll talk about some of these components. The science of reading research shows us that there, are, that there are five main components that are fundamental to reading. Phonics, phonemic awareness, vocabulary, fluency, and comprehension. We've taught our staff to visualize a reading rope with phonics and decoding and phonemic awareness on one side and vocabulary, fluency, and comprehension on the other. They must be intertwined and work together to develop the very best and well-rounded readers. Phonics and phonemic awareness foundational skills are taught to our kindergartners and first graders in about a 30 minute block called word study. We use the Orton Gillingham approach through the Institute for Multisensory Education and Hegarty. We recognize that skills need to become, the skills needed to become a proficient reader need to be explicitly taught and individualized to each student. <coughs> Guided reading addresses the other side of reading instruction. Visualize that rope again, putting isolated skills together to work to build vocabulary, fluency, and comprehension. For guided reading, kindergarten and first grade teachers use assessments to determine each student's literacy strengths and weaknesses to form individual, individualized guided reading groups. Kindergartners work in focused skill groups first semester and move into guided reading as they show readiness. All kindergarten students participate in guided reading se second semester. First graders participate in guided reading regularly throughout the entire school year. Read alouds, interactive read aloud, shared reading and writing and interactive writing is where teachers model and include students in the process of reading and writing whole group. We build vocabulary and comprehension by reading and discussing poetry, fiction, nonfiction, and much more. Kindergarten and first grade students participate in workstations throughout their work week. Carefully designed experiences allow teachers to scaffold learning and gradually release children from whole group and small group supported reading to become more independent literacy learners. The combination of phonics and phonemic awareness instruction, guided reading and shared reading and writing experiences provides children the independence needed to become readers and writers and to find the joy in books. We are very lucky to have literacy support in place at both buildings to help students that struggle and need intervention to close the gap in fundamental reading skills. Writer's Workshop is planned for 40 to 60 minutes for first grade and 60 to 80 minutes weekly for kindergarten. Writer's Workshop is the place where children get the opportunity to see themselves as authors and illustrators. In addition to the daily literacy opportunities just described, children also take part in writing mini lessons where the craft and mechanics of writing is explicitly taught and modeled. Following the district's writing map, children are exposed to a, a, write, to a variety of writing through genres like author studies, fiction, nonfiction, biographies, and poetry. While children are writing books, teachers conduct writing conferences to nudge each student forward in the writing process. Children are excited to learn about writing a spicy and descriptive book or illustrating using wow pictures. It truly is amazing to watch the growth our kindergarten and first grade students make in writing in a nine month period of time. To this day, 
I miss parent-teacher conferences, sharing the very first book that their child ever wrote, and then showing them their very last book. The progress is fantastic. So another big part of our day is social-emotional learning and building those skills. We're working with five, six, and seven-year-olds, and we're trying to help them navigate their social world and really build their emotional intelligence. And so through that work, our teachers have a curriculum that they're using this year called Purposeful People. And in Purposeful People, they have access to all sorts of online resources that help give them lessons. That could, um, the lesson could be 20 minutes, it could be 30 minutes, it could be 10 minutes, depending on what they have time for in their day. And it could be incorporated throughout their day. It could be morning meeting, could help them to problem solve if their kids are coming off of the playground and have um, some difficulties out there, some conflicts, then they can kind of go into their lessons and work through some of that curriculum to help them problem solve. So part of Purposeful People is having grade bands that build upon each other. So you can see in preschool and kindergarten, they're working through listening, following directions, identifying emotions. We build upon that in first grade with friendships, focusing, emotion awareness, and then we get our kids strong and ready with those social emotional skills and can pass those on to the two five buildings with some of that foundation built that they can continue to build upon with purposeful people also. Um, we have monthly words that we focus on, and those monthly words start with respect. Um, you can see we've worked all the way up to honesty this year, and that gives us the ability to focus on one word throughout the whole building. We're, when we're focusing on respect, the whole building is using that common language. We're looking for that in children, whether they're in the hallway, the playground, the classroom, coming off of their buses, and we continue that work all throughout the year and build upon each one of those words. Once we feel like they've had some work around each of the words, we go into celebrations. And so at PVS, we have peace rallies once a month. And this is where we come together to celebrate with the kids. We ask them what they've learned. We ask them how they show the word that they've been working on all month. Um, we play games with them. And we play games with the teachers. And we just have a lot of fun and we celebrate. And it just gives us that time as a building to come together and have a good time and to recognize the hard work that the kids have done to really try to acquire those skills for their social emotional learning. We celebrated PBN too. Um, we start at the beginning of the year with having a character assembly where we talk about our three big words. So we pulled three of the character words that Amy um, was talking about from Character Strong um, to focus on for the entire year, but then we certainly work through the strands, all of the strands that you saw and all the words that you saw. Um, so we start uh, and talk about respect, responsibility, and um, gratitude at PBN. In February, we start recognizing students who show those attributes. The kids are super excited. They get off the bus each day saying, when are we gonna do, find out who the PBN pals are for the week? So every Thursday we announce a couple children from every classroom and they get a badge and a certificate and it's super exciting. Um, character assemblies um, go throughout the year, but in February we have character week. Um, we focus on character education and this um, year we highlighted the character strong word courage as we honored our military and our veterans by providing canned foods um, we made banners and placemats and door hangers, and we took them to the Dayton VA and the Blue Star Mothers. This service project took place during our Valentine's Day parties as we show love and gratitude for others. So of course, if you ask any first grader what their favorite part of the school day is, they're gonna tell you lunch and recess. Um, our cafes are where friendship and fun begin. Children have the opportunity at both lunch and recess to talk, eat, laugh, and make new friends. We're also very lucky to explore our community to connect standards and classroom learning. Some experiences just cannot be taught through a book or a video. We have a very strong integrated arts program at the kindergarten and first grade level. Um, all of our students participate in art, music, library, physical education, and nature. Kindergarten um, flips weeks, so they might have two integrated arts one week and three the next week. Um, so they have about two of each integrated arts a month. 
whereas first grade is on a rotating schedule every day. So they get um, to experience probably more like four times a week for, or four times a year. Goodness, let's try again. Four times a month for each one of the integrated arts. In art, our little artists are given um, hands-on opportunities to try, try different skills, styles, and concepts. In music, they learn about different types of music and artists while exploring their own talents and lots of moving and shaking. In library, children get the opportunity to explore all kinds of books, listen to dynamic read-alouds, and check out books as often as they please. In physical, physical education, they have movement opportunities as we develop our gross motor skills, the art of cooperation, teamwork, and perseverance. Amy's going to talk just a little bit about nature. Nature is our newest um, integrated arts program this year, and it is a phenomenal way for students to engage in science standards. Uh, both buildings have beautiful outdoor classrooms. We have woods, we have trails, we have gardens. Um, insects, bugs, all of the things that these little kids just love to get their hands on. They're naturally curious about their world and this gives them the opportunity to explore their world. And so these are a few pictures of kids out in nature. Every day they go out that they can, unless the temperatures are too cold, but it truly is a wonderful program where they can explore science standards authentically and um, hands on. Preschool classes are uh, play-based and we have classes located at Primary Village North and Primary Village South and we're in existence to meet the Ohio mandate that children with disabilities uh, be served special education services starting at age three. So we believe strongly that children learn from their peers so subsequently most of our preschool classrooms have 50-50 or slightly more than 50-50 children without disabilities to children with disabilities. We always have a wait list for children without disabilities because we always have more interest in children attending our program than we have available slots. Both PVN and PVS preschool programs were awarded a five-star rating based on Ohio's Step Up to Quality, and that's a comprehensive review and uh, site visits. So in addition to our early childhood services, we provide speech and language, occupational, physical, vision intervention, hearing intervention, audiological, and orientation and mobility services based on need. Children learn through play and we have a balance of both child-led and teacher-led activities. We are a Reggio-inspired curriculum uh, that aligns with Ohio's early learning content standards. Uh, we believe that both the teacher and the children are co-constructors of knowledge and through observation, communication, reflection, um, it's the foundation for our uh, child-centered program. The children along with the teacher observe, reflect, and learn together through exploration and investigations of topics of interest. And those topics of interest can be generated just by the teacher carefully observing their interest, whether it also could be the child having a question or a collaboration between both the teacher and the child saying, what do we want to study next? Investigations or projects can be long or short in duration and the exchange of ideas between the educators, the children and the parents are the foundation and welcomed. So some of the projects that we've done this year are um, exploring and learning about community helpers, such as our police and firefighters, mail carriers, transportation, airplanes, cars, and trucks, ourselves, pumpkins, farm visits, storytelling, and gingerbread stories. So um, we were asked to share what our learners need, um, both some challenges and some opportunities. So we have two big challenges, and I bet you can guess what they are. One, we need full day kindergarten. Um, we need to be able to provide um, instruction needed at a developmentally appropriate place, balanced with purposeful play and time to develop social emotional learning skills. 
To provide all, kin all day kindergarten, we need more space. Um, we certainly recognize that adding staff and building space is a huge financial decision, so we do not ask lightly. Many districts, as you know, across Ohio and the nation offer full day, and each year we find it more and more difficult to fit everything into our two and a half hour day. We are thrilled to see that all day kindergarten is a priority in strategic planning, and we're ready to meet this challenge with your support. Another need that we have is just um, trying to really access as many resources as we can to support students that might have mental health needs, social emotional needs, lagging skills coming in, not quite showing us that they're ready to learn or, or being able to um, access the full curriculum because of behaviors and, and some of those things that we think link back to trauma. And so those are things that I think most buildings are experiencing across the district and just w raising that awareness of a need I think is, is not quite as, as important as all day K but certainly it's there as well. Um, we're very thankful of, for a few opportunities. We're thankful for lots of opportunities, but a few that we wanted to mention. You've no doubt heard a lot about the multi-tiered systems of support or MTSS that we are on the journey um, towards. And we're very thankful to the board for your support of the MTSS coaches that are instrumental in helping us move forward with this process so that we can make sure that students, all students have access to core curriculum as well as, as support and providing intervention for each child to achieve at the highest level. We've also always recognized and continue to recognize the importance of our literacy specialists and our math specialists who provide intervention for some of our struggling learners, along with our school counselors who support our students' social and emotional needs. These positions are crucial to the implementation of our strategic plan and student success. So our preschool enrollment is designed to meet the needs of children with disabilities, as I stated earlier. Um, and we do always have a wait list for our typically developing children. Our wait list can be anywhere from 50 to 100 children that are out there that would love to come. Um, and right now, we just finished our lottery process, and so um, we have the wait list. If anybody watching this later on um, wants to um, enroll their child at preschool, if they're suspecting a disability, they need to contact me directly um, or my staff, and we will certainly go through that process. But if their child is typically developing, um, there's a wait list application on our website, um, and we will be screening um, our typicals in June. Okay. And for kindergarten, we are trying to get the message out strongly that registration for next year is beginning March 1st. The online enrollment process opens up, and so we're hoping to get as many of those um, new kindergartners registered as possible. Any student, um, they must be five years old by September 30th to register, and then we will start our screening in end of April, beginning of May, and then again in July. So we're looking forward to that new class coming in. And last but not least, we may have little hands, but we have great big plans. Thank you for always supporting the district's youngest learners, their educators, and us. Have a great evening.